there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with the episode of Way of the Underhive. This series is dedicated to helping brand new players to Nicomunda build their starting rosters and learn more about the game mechanics of their favorite gangs. And on today's episode, we will discuss playing a Water Guild Outcast gang in the Aranthus Succession. We'll discuss the benefits of playing in the Aranthus Succession, feature the gang's unique attributes, provide a 2,400 point starting roster, demonstrate how to play this gang on the tabletop, and provide tips on how to develop this gang as your campaign uh, progresses and because this video is a little more of a deeper dive i will put timestamps down in the description box below so that we can click and navigate to the part that interests you the most so first of all why should you play the water guild the reason why is because the official miniatures from forge world are actually quite awesome looking at the same time you get to also try to use incorporate Eero slagmas into your gang which is perhaps one of the coolest looking models with the most horrible stats of all time in nickermunda and at the same time you want a really flexible as well as powerful list so that being said Said, let's go and talk about exactly why you should be playing with the Water Guild in your next campaign of Nicaragua. So first of all, let's talk about the benefits of playing in the Ranthus Succession. And the really key benefit here is that 2,000 to 2,400 starting credit uh, list to make your list with. And the reason why that's so important is because you can double the amount of credits to start off your campaign, and you can make some really awesome and some really powerful builds with that increased credit limit. Uh, you get 2,000 credits if you're staying in the Underhive exclusively, but if you're planning on entering the Alice race, you get additional 400 credits to spend on vehicles as well as mounted fighters. Another cool benefit of the Ranthus Succession is that you can double the number of champions in your gang as well. Now you still have to worry about gang composition rules with having just as many fighters to balance that out in your roster but with that being said you can make some really powerful lists with new champions that you add in your rosters that you couldn't do before and with that increased uh, credit limit a lot of people think that you actually have to double the size of your gang in terms of quantity but it's actually the wrong way to look at it the best way to look at it is by actually just taking the normal number of fighters you would have in a gang and just really invest in your fighters with really good weapons powerful equipment as well as really good armor and maybe do things you would never do before like buy maybe additional upgrades or get exotic beasts get respirators, photo goggles, wherever the case may be. And that's the major benefit of playing in the Aranthi Succession. So the unique attribute about this gang specifically is that we're taking full advantage of how Outcast gang can be customized and built using delegation rules as well as persona, uh, Dramatis Personae as well as using different types of equipment from the different Outcast gang lists that we can create. At the same time, we're also going to be taking advantage of mutations as well as psychers. Uh, the Water Guild actually with this delegation has some really good willpower stats for their fighters, so we're going to be taking full advantage of that. At the same time, we'll also use the brand new mutations mechanic that was released from the Apocrypha Nicaragua rules to actually outfit some of our champions as well. And like I said before, we are going to be using some Dramatis Persona in this gang with Eero Slagmist. His stats are not all that great, but we're going to make them really awesome by giving them some upgrades of amount. And of course, who doesn't want to play the Water Guild? They look really, really awesome as well. They control all the utilities within Nicaragua, and you can have a blast doing so. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about what your starting roster would look like. This is what I'm going to call the Water Guild Outcast Gang starting roster for Necromunda around this session. It's going to be valued at 2,400 credits. So let's talk about the individual fighters that are inside of this gang. First off, your gang has a special one known as the Water Harvest, which means you get to add plus one to rolls to determine if an enemy fighter is captured. You also get additional plus one bonus for each member of the Nautic and Siphoning Delegation that is not gonna action. So you get that as a universal rule bringing a Water Guild gang. So if you're really interested about capturing enemy fighters, you'll be able to do so. Now your leader will be your Master Nautican. This guy's gonna cost you 225 credits. He is gonna be a leader with a weird archetype. He's also got an armor undersuit, mesh armor, as well as coming with needle pistol and slow knife, as well as Kim Sith, a bio booster, stim slug stash, step aside, Overseer, and you can make him a Biomancer because you use the Biomancy Discipline. He's got the fast healing ability, which means he can remove flesh wounds and wounds from other fighters, as well as stop bleeding as well, which is really going to help him out in order to heal up your fighters. Now, with a willpower score of 6+, plus, you will trigger your psychic powers about 77% of the time, so that part is kind of nice. My suggestion to you would be to pair your Master Nauticin with your Sub Nauticin, because that is a Wrecking Ball, the unit that's inside your gang. Use Overseers in order to double activate it, and if you're not using Overseer to double activate your Sub Nauticin, then use their biomass ability to protect and to heal up your Subnautican as well. And that's good whether you're really your fast healing as we just stop bleeding uh, powers are really going to help out because that stub, uh, stu uh, Subnautica is going to be taking a lot of damage from your opponents. So healing that up and keeping it in a good fighting condition is really going to help you out as well. You do have a needle pistol as well as a stiletto knife. And so because if you take Kim Sith by passing your intelligence test, you can get bonuses on those toxin trait weapons. You can use that to protect yourself. You can also use a stim slug stash in order to make yourself a little bit more deadly in close combat as well. And as the campaign develops, you could I would recommend also getting the quickening as a psychic power because you can increase your uh, stats to make you a better fighter, as well as iron arm, which is a nice way of actually giving you some more saves in close combat. And that is going to be the leader of your gang. 
Now your first two champions of your gang is going to be your Cypher Knight. It's going to cost you 165 credits. This is going to be one of your champions. You're going to give this person the weird archetype as well, as well as purchase an armor undersuit. They have a mesh armor as well as a needle rifle with infra sight, so that way they can see in the dark, as well as stiletto knife for close combat. You equip this guy with Kim Synth, so that way they can increase his intelligence in order to get the uh, actual um, toxin trait off on your weapons, as well as a cult icon for larger group activations. They come with the dodge skill automatically, and you're going to make this person a Psyker with a Chronomancer ability with Flicker, which means that once per turn you'll be able to take a third action if you want to, as well as the power Zen Shootist. Now with this willpower of 6 plus score, you will trigger your psychic power 77% of the time as well, and use Zen Shootist to increase your Ballista skill to 2 plus, as well as Flicker if you want to make a critical action for a third time as well. The next really good power after this would be Lucky Aura would be good for this guy, so that way if your enemy tries to shoot at you, you could actually uh, make them reroll the hit result. And I would suggest you pair this fighter with Hive Skill number 1 and 2, so that way you can do some shooting actions. We'll talk about those guys a little bit later on when we get to their part of the roster. Your second champion is going to be Eros Slagmas. It's going to cost you 335 credits. This is the Dramatis Persona character, Bounty Hunter. And you can make this guy a champion as well. You're going to give him the mutant archetype so that way he can purchase mutations. He's going to replace his last pistol with a needle pistol. He's going to keep his frag grenades. And you're going to replace his fighting knife with a stiletto knife. You're also going to get this guy photo goggles, Kim Sith, bio booster, as well as a Medicaid kit. He comes with the iron jaw as well as nerves of steel and true grit skills. And you give him scaly skin, which would give him a four up armor save at all times uh, with that mutation as well. This is a really good idea to use this guy as part of your assault fire team. Excellent for close combat with that needle pistol as well as with that stiletto knife. Use Kim Synth in order to make sure you get your bonuses for your toxin traits as well. And he's also very survivable and you can also heal up his fighters as well with his Medicaid kit, which makes him really good as an assault team leader. Now they're going to use two more Outcast Champions. Outcast Champion number one is going to cost you 160 credit. This fighter's got the Gunslinger archetype. He's going to have an Armored Undersuit, which is free, as well as a Furnace Plate, which is free, as well as a Last Pistol and a Funny Knife, which are also free as well, because he's getting those from Eros Slag Mist. You're also going to equip this guy with a Grenade Launcher with Frag and Crack Grenades, as well as Photo Goggles, so that person can see in the dark, as well as the Fast Shot ability, so they can shoot twice with a Grenade Launcher. You're going to use this fighter to suppress your enemy with double shooting with your Grenade Launcher. Either Frag Grenades or Crack Grenades, whatever one is more viable to you, you'll be able to fire twice with that grenade grenade launcher and just cause all kinds of problems. After that, you're going to have Outcast Champion number 2 is going to cost 305 credits. This figure's got the Gunslinger archetype with armored undersuit. They're also packing mesh armor as well as a web gun. They're also packing a stub gun for a backup weapon. You're giving this guy a cult icon because you can do that with your guilds by having double icons because you can buy as many cult icons as you want for larger group activations. You're giving this guy photo goggles as well so they can see in the dark as well as the fast shot ability. Now this fighter will assault forward with a shooting twice with their web gun to mess up your enemies and allow your Subnautican as well as Hive Skill number 3 and 4, as well as Era Slag Mist to finish them off. And with the Cult Icon, they should be getting larger group activation, activating Hive Skill number 3 and 4, and we'll talk about those guys specifically when we get to them in the rosters. So the real kill in your game is going to be your Subnautican. It's going to cost you 210 credits. This fighter's got an armor undersuit as well as a hazard suit. They got open fists as a bear weapons as well as photo goggles so they can see in the dark. You give this guy a respirator and when combined with the hazard suit, we'll give him a 4-up bonus against toxin and gas tax weapons as well as the berserker charge where they get additional attacks when they charge forward. Now you're going to pair this fighter with your Master Nauticin and the reason why is because your Master Nauticin is going to spam the Overseer ability on the Subnautica so that way you can activate twice. Double activation rules with this fighter because he just kind of charges through guys and smashes them in close combat as well. You also want to use the Master Nauticin's healing abilities from his psychic abilities to keep the Subnautican alive and just keep on being the living wrecking ball that he is and having to destroy your opponents left, right, and center. Now for the rest of your gang, you have two Outcast Hive Skill, number one and two. They're both equipped exactly the same at 100 credits apiece. Both have mesh armor as well as last guns with stub guns for backup weapons as well as photo goggles. So Hive Skill, number one and two will suppress their enemies with their last guns at a distance and you're going to equip them with hotshot last packs as soon as possible so they have strength four weapons as well. And Stiletto Swords are actually really good backup weapons for these guys, especially if you want to use them so that way they can defend themselves in close combat against their opponents. Meanwhile, Outcast Hive Skill number 3 and 4 are going to be equipped exactly the same at 110 credits apiece. Both will have mesh armor as well as stub guns with chain swords as well as blasting charges. Now these guys will assault forward with you throwing their blasting charges first to disrupt their enemy and then they close in with their stub guns and chain swords and slice people apart with their attacks. I highly suggest that you purchase dumb dumb rounds for these guys as soon as possible so that way they have reliable strength for attacks. And if you want to, you can upgrade these guys with stub plasma comma pistols for extra pain, especially when it comes to that plasma pistol if you want to in the future. 
And as for hangers on in this gang, you actually get two of them. Uh, the reason why is because you get a slopper for absolutely free for being a water guild gang, so that's gonna help you out with some recovery rolls. This guy's got a fighting knife, and that's the only thing he really has. And the other one's gonna be a rogue doc, because it costs 50 credits. That guy's got last pistol as well as a Medicaid kit, as well as a Medicaid skill, and you wanna keep this guy around in case any one of your fighters rolls a critical injury. That way, this guy can save them as well. And that makes up the fighters of your list. So with the fighters taken care of, let's talk about the vehicle you're gonna have. So you're going to recruit a Guild of Coin hauler for 530 credits. This fighter is going to be equipped with photo goggles as well as driving a Guild of Coin Krotos Pattern Iron Crawler. The thing's going to have a large transport cage in the back with five firing points that you guys can shoot out of. It's going to be tracked to deal with difficult terrain. You're going to give it a blade of armor so that way it can deal with uh, non-glancing blows to the body. It's also going to have a weapon stash because your needle weapons have really high armor uh, ammo saves. So then that weapon stash is going to help you be able to reload those guns easier. It's going to have a redundant drive system as well as an engine shell just in case the drive or the engine takes a non-glancing kit in order to keep this thing a little bit more survivable. Now your entire gang will ride into battle in this vehicle as well and the upgrades are actually designed to make this vehicle more tough and more survivable against things you'll be facing out in the ash waste. The weapon stash should help you out. Your fighters are equipped with needle weapons as well as grenades to reload in case they roll ammo rolls for that. You also want to exploit your firing points so that way you can shoot at your enemies for now as you close the distance but I highly suggest that you get a grenade launcher as well as a heavy stubber for this weapon as soon as possible so that way you have more firepower. All right, so now that we're done talking about your actual roster, let's talk about exactly how you'll play this guild on the tabletop with our tabletop tactics. So as you can see, we have a little bit of a strip map representing our 4x4 table that you're playing on for the Ash Waste. Enemy number one, enemy number two represent your two enemy fire teams. We have the Iron Crawler here in the middle here. And your Iron Crawler consists of two fire teams. You have the support fire team, which consists of your Siphon Knight with our needle rifle, as well as champion number one with the grenade launcher, as well as uh, as well as well uh, Hive Outcast number one and two. These are guys who will be armed with your last guns. After that, we have your Master Nautica represented by this guy here, Eros Slagmus, which is represented by this bullet here. Champion number two, which is the guy's armed with a web gun, as well as your subnautic over here, as well as Hive Scum number three and four, whereas the guys are armed with the blasting charges as well as with the uh, chain swords. So all of your fighters will be mounted up on the Iron Crawler. As you move your Iron Crawler towards your enemy, what you're going to be doing is firing from the firing points or lay down to suppress the fire. You're going to do that until eventually you get enough credits to actually buy weapons for the Iron Crawler itself. The Iron Crawler is going to be actually quite tough in order to crack, and the reason why is because it's got really good toughness as well as really good durability. And with the upgrades that we've given this vehicle, you can basically have to worry about non-glancing uh, non hits for about the first round that you actually take those on. Now, as you basically travel towards the enemy, what's going to happen is this. Your Iron Crawler is going to go towards one enemy unit, and while that ends up happening, your Master Nautican, as well as Champion Number 1, was the guy on the grenade launcher, they'll stay on board, lobbing grenades at your enemy, while your Master Nautican will then trigger your Sub Nautican using Overseer. What your Overseer, your Sub Nautican is going to do is dismount as quickly as it can, and then charge directly the enemy group, Fire Team Number 1, causing all kinds of problems in close combat. Now, while that's happening, of course, your Assault Fire Team over here then departs from the Iron Crawler, as well as Eros Lagmus, as well as your uh, your hive scum armed with uh, blasting charges and chain swords, as well as your other champion armed with web gun, they actually flank to the left hand side here in order to flank towards your enemy. While that's happening, your support fire team over here with your siphon knight uses their larger group activations to activate hive scum number one and two, which are on the last guns. These guys also dismount and I'll start opening fire on directly on fire team number two, while these guys get in position to maneuver around your enemy. And then lastly, what's going to end up happening is this: is we're going to kind of set the trap once you flank your enemies. What's going to happen is that your support fire team is going to flank around the right hand side, having that larger group activation using that Siphonite's cult icon ability to do this, and you're going to open fire to your enemy's flank. Now, what's going to happen then, of course, that your Iron Crawl is going to charge and forward, run guys over in close combat with your champion launching grenades at it. Your Master Nautican can also charge in too to help support with the attack on this side. Meanwhile, on the left hand side, the Subnautican is still attacking the enemy fire team, and then Eros Slag Miss, as well as Champion Number Two, rush in. Champion Number Two starts gluing guys down with the web gun while Eros Slag Miss charges in for close combat. Hell out, uh, uh, Hive Scum number three and four start lobbing a blasting charge directly on the enemy and then charging in forward and also taking eyes out with their chain swords and stub guns. This way, you're attacking enemy from three different sides and you're catching enemy in a crossfire and just assaulting through the objective and killing everyone that you see uh, standing in your way. Now, as your campaign develops, of course, you're going to want to increase your gang as the campaign develops. The first thing I recommend you do is you purchase Dum Dum Rounds as well as Hotshot Last Packs for your supporting Hive Scum. Uh, this will give you some really good strength for shooting attacks for enemies, uh, for your guys against your enemies as well. If you want to, you could upgrade later on with needle rifles if you want to for your guys packing the last guns. Uh, that could actually be a really cool build because they're silent and also have the toxin trait as well. I would also recommend getting Stiletto Swords as well as Knives for your fighters in the Hive Scum because those are really good uh, close combat attacks with toxin trait and it could really help balance out your team. 
Another thing you want to do, of course, is get a grenade launcher as well as your heavy stubber for your iron coiler as soon as possible so that we have much more firepower with that vehicle. Makes it really survivable and also really deadly in the shooting game as well. At the same time, you also want to recruit a chem dealer as soon as possible. And the reason why is because you want to purchase chem darts for all your needle guns. Specifically, Kalma is the chem you want to buy because you manage to hit those guys with that Kalma dart, they're going to basically not be able to do anything and you can finish them off in close combat a lot easier. I also suggest you get chem synth as soon as possible as well so that way you can take intelligence checks for your fighters and makes their tox weapons a little bit more deadly as well. So in conclusion, this is my recommended list for the Aranthes Secession if you want to play a Water Guild Outcast gang. This actually takes advantage of the wonderful delegation that you get from the Water Guild and so it could be a lot of fun playing. At the same time, also using Sir Dramatis Persona in your gang as well. This is a little bit more of a fun, more of a unique build and if you guys have any ideas for some really unique or interesting builds that you would like to see later on, please let me know in the comments section and I'll go ahead and make videos about that. For example, I'm actually making a Cult of the Iron Automata uh, build here pretty soon. We're basically playing an Outcast gang that use the Iron Automata from the Book of the Judgment as their leaders. They're supposed to represent House uh, Vansar guys who've gone too far and are actually now worshipping robots as living gods. So that's an example of something I want to build later on for this list. But that's good to do with you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good to listen to you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy. Oh,